I want to start by saying that if you or anyone you know is suffering from suicidal thoughts and suicidal tendencies to please call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline is 800-273-8255. I fully believe in the right to physician-assisted suicide. I believe that it is an autonomous right of each individual to choose how and when they will pass away, given if their quality of life has decreased and they have exhausted all options in seeking mental treatment. I know that a lot of people may argue that suicide is a permanent solution to a short-term problem, which in some cases it can be. According to a study done in 2015, psychotherapy helped reduce the risk in teens and adults when talking about their suicidal thoughts. Also in 2004, a study was done that prescribing and taking SSRIs, which are serotonin reuptake inhibitors, helped reduce the risk of suicide as well. And those both those studies I found, um, those are according to the Psychiatric Times. Also, regret. Um, I can also attest after having attempted suicide once myself, I fully regret the decision that I did that, and I'm happy to be here today, as well as the 29 people who survived attempting suicide off the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, which is notorious for suicide attempts to happen. Those 29 people all said that the moment they jumped, they realized how much they regretted doing so. And to say that they regretted this is to also say that what if every person that did commit suicide regretted it the moment that it happened and they were too late in stopping it. So placing this burden on physicians is wrong and immoral of us to do so. However, I still fully believe that it is the right of each individual. We are not required to donate organs because that is our, our autonomous right. Even after death, it is the respect of one's body. But I also believe that we should have a say when we're alive if we are suffering from depression and have exhausted our options, as well as suffering from illnesses, including terminal illnesses, and our quality of life has diminished and there is just no other option for some. When seeking physician-assisted death, it is not required of the physician to assist in this. This allows the physician to choose whether they agree with it or not, and they are not forced to do so if they do not believe. The patient will go through numerous tests to prove that they are of sound mind and that they have sought treatment or that they are terminally ill. The physician will then, over a period of time, decide if they are going to prescribe them the medication that they can use to pass away in their home or at the hospital, which includes benzodiazepines, so that it is a painless death. This also helps them, the patient, to speak with family members and give their goodbyes. I think it is a beautiful way to have closure with those around you that you love and to help them understand the pain that you are suffering. This can also be easier on the family members as well because instead of finding their body in a traumatizing manner, they will be able to possibly even be there with them and hold their hand while they exit this life. With that, I wanted to show you a clip of Andrew Mayer Clayton. He was, I believe, 24 and he lived in Canada. He suffered from depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, suicidal thoughts, and he also had a, I forget the name of it, but he, he was constantly in pain and his quality of life was just not there. And at the young age, he decided that he wanted to die, but he didn't want to put his loved ones through him attempting suicide in a traumatizing way. So this is Andrew on why he is choosing death. The real reason for someone like myself wanting the right to die is, is, is very simple. Once there is no quality of life, 
life is akin to a meaningless existence. I understand it. Physician-assisted death is the most dignified way to go for people who are terminally ill and who have exhausted all options seeking mental treatment. Those who do want to die will find a way to die no matter what. And it would be more humane to be there for them every step of the way, resulting in a peaceful death, rather than having them be alone in their final moments, which could be painful if not done correctly. Again, It is the autonomous right of each individual to choose when and how they die, and it should not be government-mandated. It should be at the decision of the individual and their doctor. Thank you.